Hello everyone, I'm Ian from Creative Visuals and today I'm going to be going over the Samsung camera app versus the Google camera app. Now I've wanted to do this comparison for a very long time, but up until recently I couldn't get it to work on my S9 Plus. It just kind of crashed every time I tried, but now it finally works. And because of that, I can do this comparison now. So I'm going to compare first just the normal JPEGs, just how you would normally take a photo if you're not trying to replace your camera with it. Then I'm gonna do some video, even though I don't think there should be a big difference there. So basically what this really is, is just comparing HDR plus from Google's camera versus the normal HDR on the Samsung camera and seeing whether you should use the Google cam if you have a Samsung phone. So let's get right into this video. One more thing that I just wanna mention here real quick is that this microphone that I'm using cost me less than a dollar. And I think that the sound quality coming out of it is pretty good for that kind of price so if you guys want to review please drop a like leave me a comment down below and i will make sure to do a quick review of this thing because to me like i said it's pretty damn awesome i said twice hope my mom doesn't want Okay, so we're gonna start off the video here with this shot, nice landscape. And I just wanna mention that I got my shoes very, very, very wet trying to do that hyperlapse. So I hope it turned out good for your viewing pleasure because my socks are wet. Well, what did you guys think of that? Those were the photos. I'm gonna have to wait till I get home to see what it looked like. But coming out of the camera, they actually looked surprisingly similar. They each had their advantages and flaws, judging by what I saw, but I'll have to get them up on my Mac and see what they actually look like. So next up, I'm here, nice basketball court. So at this nice court, let's do some video. Now they are both gonna be at 4K 30 frames per second as the Google camera doesn't offer 4K 60 because well, no Pixel offers 4K 60 yet. So 4K 30 it is, let's check it out. This is a walking stabilization test. And this is a jogging. And running. That was the 
stabilization test for video and HDR. If you guys have seen all the photos and videos, I want you guys to go down in the comments section below and let me know which one you guys like most. I'm really curious to see which camera you guys think is the best, camera A or camera B. And at the end, after I show you guys this side-by-side -side comparison, I will spill the beans on which one is which. So let's start off here. I'm going to go over the photos and then the videos. And the photos are going to be ranked and scored for their dynamic range, detail, noise, most potential for editing, and the easiest to upload as is. And the videos will be uh, ranked on their stabilization, detail, and dynamic range. So moving on here to these first photos, as you can see, they are very similar. And for dynamic range, it is a tie between the two. For detail, it seems like camera A is actually a bit uh, over sharpened and camera B is not. So for sharpness and detail, I'm going to have to go for camera B for this one just because this one is over sharpened. For noise, if we look over here, it looks like they are pretty close. It looks like there's actually more noise reduction on camera B here. So noise goes to this one, camera B for less noise. The most potential for editing is a tie and the easiest to upload as is is a tie. Moving on to this photo here, as you can see right off the bat, there's a weird hue to camera B, but it has more dynamic range. So dynamic range, camera B. Detail, moving in here, you can see a lot more noise on camera B, but as a result, there's also more detail. So detail goes to camera B, and the one with less noise is camera A. Most potential for editing, I'd probably say is camera B, just because of the mo more dynamic range and the most easiest to upload as is would be camera A just because it's not yellow. Moving on to this photo, as you can see, this is very blown out. So dynamic range goes to B detail. If we zoom in here, they are pretty close, but I think just because this one tried to overexpose a bit, it has more noise. This one has a bit more detail and this one has more noise. So both noise and lack of both detail and lack of noise go to camera B for this one. Moving on to most uh, potential for editing, we're going to have to say camera B just because it's not blown out and easiest to upload as is once again camera B because it's not blown out. Moving on, we see for these two, dynamic range is pretty close, but this one is a bit more blown out. So camera B does have more dynamic range. If you look at detail, I think it is a bit easier to read over here on camera B. So detail goes to camera B. For noise, if we look somewhere over here, it looks like there might be a bit more noise on camera B, but there is also more detail. So for this one, the lack of noise goes to camera A. Most suitable for editing, I would say, is camera B, just because it's not blown out, more dynamic range, and the easiest to upload as is would also go to camera B. Moving on to these two, this one is once again overexposed on camera A, so dynamic range goes over to camera B. For detail, if we take a look in here, it actually looks like there might be a bit more, just because there's more contrast and it looks quite a bit more. It's close, but I'd say there is a bit more detail over on camera B. For noise, I'm going to say camera A does have a bit more just because it is blown out a bit and it just kind of, there's less noise over here. It might have been noise reduction, whatever it is, there is less over on camera B. Most potential for editing, camera B just because there's less um, overexposed sky. You can change everything a bit more because it's not blown out. And the easiest to upload as is camera B. It looks more pleasing. Moving over, this one is a huge difference. Look at that sky. It is just gone. Dynamic range B, obvious win. Detail, this one might be a bit closer. But to me, it looks like there is a bit more noise reduction on camera A and a bit less over here. So there's more detail. So once again, more detail goes to camera B, but the more noise is on camera B. So A has less noise. Most potential for editing. Camera B, obvious choice. So the sky is not blown out. It's a lot easier to bring up the shadows than to bring down these highlights that are just gone over here. Easiest to upload as is B once again. Moving over to these photos, kind of like the first one, not much of a difference here, tie for everything. Moving on to these, dynamic range is pretty close, but this one is blown out a bit more. And this one may be a tiny bit darker, but the detail is still there. So dynamic range goes to B, detail, if we zoom in here, you can see that noise reduction over here. Look at the pavement. You can see that this one applies much more noise reduction, so there is less noise. So uh, that is a good thing. But over here, there is much more detail with the uh, exception of a bit more noise. So detail goes to B. Lack of noise goes to A. Most potential for editing is pretty close, but there's just more dynamic range here. So B get, takes the cake for that. And easiest to upload as is, once again, B. 
Moving on to this photo, it's pretty close here, but as you can see, there is a bit more detail here. It might have just been where I focused, but dynamic range, this one is actually less blown out this time, so A is less blown out, more detail goes to B, less noise. They are both very similar for noise, so I'm just gonna say a tie for this. Most potential for editing, tie, and easiest to upload as is, tie. Moving into Walmart here, as you can see, dynamic range is pretty close on these two. I'd say this is a flatter image on A, so A actually takes the cake for the most dynamic range. Next up, detail. If we zoom in here, they are pretty close, but this one is once again over sharpened. But this one is over sharpened, so I would say that the detail does actually go to camera A. Less noise, let's see here. There might actually be a bit more noise on camera A, so camera B takes cake for less noise. Most potential for editing, probably this one because it's flatter and easiest to upload as is. Probably this one on the right. Moving over to these boots, if we look at them, this one is once again a flatter image. So if we zoom in here, I'm going to say that this one has a more dynamic range detail wise. Let's see if we can find that tag. It's a bit easier to read over here than on this side, so I'm going to say detail goes to camera on this side. Noise, mm, maybe this one has a bit better noise reduction, but this one has more detail. Moving on to the most potential for editing, once again the flatter image and the easiest to upload as is over here on the right. Moving on to a nighttime scene, let's take a look. Uh, dynamic range wise, I'm going to say this one has a bit more, but it is a bit more over sharpened. Uh, so detail wise, I'm going to have to give it over here. Noise, this one has a bit less noise, but this one is, this one has a bit less noise, but this one is actually um, a bit sharper too. Most potential for editing, probably over here, just because it's not so blown out and easiest to upload as is, they're a tie. Moving on to this parking lot. This is where I saw a big difference. Look at this sign here. Look at the Montana sign. So dynamic range is a clear win for this camera over here. Detail, also a win for camera B. Noise, this one might actually have more noise, but it also has more detail. This one has less noise. Most potential for editing over here, more dynamic range, and easiest to upload as is once again over here on the right. Okay, so now that we've compared the photos, I actually decided not to compare the video. After opening both of them up and looking at them side by side, I think the differences were pretty clear just seeing them. So basically camera A and B both had really good dynamic range and very good detail in 4K at 30 frames per second, but the stabilization was what really uh, separated the two. Uh, and camera A had much better stabilization in pretty much every condition and uh, camera B had kind of shaky bad footage so stabilization wise video I would definitely recommend camera A. But now let's tally up those scores from the photo examples for the performance section and what we see is that camera A scored 13 overall and camera B scored 35. So that is a big difference between the two for the quality and the performance of the camera and how the photos turn out. So camera B here is the clear winner. But now it's time to decide which one was which. So the actual results was that camera A was the Samsung camera and camera B was the Google camera. So that is a pretty big difference in scores there and I think the Google camera actually performed really well in the detail department. But in the way of how you use the camera and the ease of use, that is what I want to talk about real quick. Because sometimes the quality isn't the only thing that matters. Yes, for me, that is a very big deal. But the ease of use comes into play too. For one, the Samsung app is a million times easier to use. Yes, the Google app is like straightforward in that too. But just how long it takes to take a photo and how easy it is to get a good one. It is much easier on the Samsung, and there are so many more features, 4K 60, better stabilization, super slow-mo, all that for video, as well as for photos, there's different burst functions that you just can't do while using the Google app with the HDR+, Plus, which is pretty much the only reason that you would use the Google app as opposed to the Samsung app. So if you look at it, it takes forever to take an HDR plus photo because it doesn't just have to take the photo, which takes longer than on the Samsung to do an HDR, but then it has to process it before you can take another one. So that takes forever. And if you don't have the time, if you're trying to get sports or something, this is just out of the picture. As well, if the subjects are moving too much, you sometimes get motion blur. And although the result is better in the right conditions, 
for ease of use, the Samsung just absolutely tears apart the Google Cam on this on uh, Samsung phones. So that pretty much wraps it up for today. Uh, if you're in it for the detail, you're in it for the production quality of the photo, and you have the time to get the perfect shot, use the Google Cam. You're going to have a more high uh, high dynamic range, more detail, and just a lot more options for editing. But if you want to have the camera that you can just always snap it and get a good shot, not maybe maybe not as good as a Google picture, but a good shot, you can use the Samsung cam. Ease of use, Samsung, quality, go for the Google. So that wraps it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have many more on the way. I will talk to you in the next one. Have a great day and stay creative. Oh.